Okay guys, so thanks for participating in an interactive calendar and um, a morning message today. We are going to go ahead and continue with our reading of Wayside School Gets a Little Stranger by Lewis Sacker. Um, yesterday, remember, we read the chapter about Jason going to the dentist called Open Wide. And uh, remember, his dentist used to be named, before she got married, Jane Smith. And remember, that is the girl who caused all the nonsense with Lewis with Mrs. Drizzle. So we'll have to figure out what happens with when they find out this information, okay? So will they go to Mrs. Drizzle? Are they gonna tell her that that's his dentist? What are they gonna do, okay? Ooh, and by the picture, I think we know what's gonna happen, but let's see. So today's chapter is chapter 22, and it's called Jane Smith. So there's Mrs. Drizzle chasing her. All right. I found Jane Smith, Jason told Stephen the next morning when he got to school after going to the dentist. You better tell Dee Dee, said Stephen. They hurried across the playground. The whistle blew. No running, ordered Mr. Lewis, the professional playground supervisor. Because remember, the real Lewis is gone, and now they have Mr. Lewis, who is supposed to be so important. Now, I want both of you to go back to the edge of the blacktop and walk this time. The boys went back the way they came, then came back the way they went. Dee Dee was sitting on a bench. She had been benched by Mr. Lewis for excessive noise making. I found Jane Smith, Jane whispered as he walked past her. Dee Dee and Jason entered the classroom together. Mrs. Drizzle was seated behind her desk. As they passed in front of her, Dee Dee stopped and said, Did you have a nice time at the dentist yesterday, Jason? Yes, Dee Dee, said Jason. It was very nice. I wonder if we have the same dentist said Dee Dee. What's your dentist's name? Her name is Dr. Payne, said Jason, but that hasn't always been her name. It hasn't? asked Dee Dee. Oh no, said Jason. Before she was married, her name was Jane Smith. Jane Smith? asked Dee Dee. Is that spelled J-A-N-E-S-M-I-T-H? Yes, that's how you spell Jane Smith, said Jason. But like I said, that's not her name anymore. Her name is Dr. Payne. She works at the dentist office at 124 Garden Street. Then they took their seats. Late that afternoon, Dr. Payne finished work and walked out of her office. It had been a good day. She had drilled 25 teeth. She made $60 for every tooth she drilled. 25 times $60 is $1,500 or $1,500. Not bad for one day's work. Of course, not all the teeth really had cavities. But how would any of her patients find out about that? She got into her fancy silver and black sports car and drove away. She sang along with the radio as she drove. She didn't even notice the old beat up green station wagon in her rear view mirror. She lived in a mansion next to the lake. There was a stone wall around her house. She pressed a button in her car and an iron gate opened. The gate closed behind her as she headed up the long winding driveway to the house. A moment later, the old green station wagon stopped and parked next to the gate. A woman got out walked around the back and opened the tailgate. So let's make a couple predictions. Who do you think is in the old green station wagon that followed Dr. Payne, formerly Jane Smith, home? If you said Mrs. Drizzle, I think you're right. That's my prediction too. She pulled out a ladder and she set the ladder up against the gate. Under her arm, she carried an old blue note. Dr. Payne's butler handed her a drink. The cook was making Dr. Payne dinner. Dr. Payne's dog, cat, and husband were waiting for her in the den. Her dog's name was Brussels and her cat's name was Sprouts. She petted them both. Her husband's name was Sham. She petted him too. 
Hi, darling, how was your day? He asked. I made 1,500 bucks, said Jane. They hugged and kissed. They loved each other, but they loved money even more. Then they had dinner by candlelight as they watched the sun set over the lake. After dinner, they sat out on the deck under the stars. Sprouts lay purring on Jane's lap and Brussels sat faithful, faithfully by her side. Life was perfect. I love you, darling, she said, petting Sprouts. And I love you, said Sham. I was talking to the cat, said Jane. The butler stepped out onto the deck. Excuse me, madame, he said, but there's an elderly woman out in the front yard. Jane's long fingernails dug into her cat's neck. I wonder how she got past the gate, said Sham. I don't know, sir, said the butler. She's probably hungry. Perhaps I can give her some leftover. No, shouted Jane. Get rid of her. Let me have a look, said Sham, and he followed the butler back into the house. He returned a moment later. Darling, you'll never guess who's here. One of your former teachers. Isn't that just the sweetest? And Jane screamed. She jumped to her feet and Sprouts flew off her lap and into the hot tub. What's wrong? asked Sham. You moron, shouted Jane. I told you to get rid of her. And she kicked her dog out of the way and then climbed over the railing and jumped off the deck to the ground 15 feet below. Mrs. Drizil came out onto the deck. You can't get away from me, young lady, she hollered. Jane hurt her ankle pretty badly when she hit the ground. It was either sprained or broken. She lay on the ground in agony as she looked up at her former, former teacher. You have homework to do, said Mrs. Drizil, looking at her. Jane's face twisted in pain. Rub a monkey's tummy, she shouted, then struggled to her feet. She had a suitcase stashed in the boat boathouse just in case this ever happened. She hobbled to it, grabbed it, and then limped down to the lake, dragging her suitcase behind her. Mrs. Drizil hurried down the steps on the side of the deck. Jane groaned as she threw her suitcase into a motorboat. Then she pulled herself aboard and started the engine. Darling, come back, Sham shouted from across the deck as he watched the boat sputter across the water. Mrs. Drizil climbed into an old rowboat. I'll find you, Jane Smith, she shouted into the darkness. You can run, but you can't hide. Jane's voice echoed back across the black water. Rub a monkey's tummy with your head. And neither of them was ever to be seen again. So that's how they got rid of Mrs. Drizil. They found Jane Smith and both of them disappeared. Maybe we'll find out what happens to them later in the book. Tomorrow we will read chapter 23, which is ears. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon for writing.